have actual lighting set up, you can probably see it on the reflecting on my face. My alarm's gonna go off at half four, so if it goes off while I'm filming, then I'm sorry. I'm being George's alarm clock. She was kind of mine today, so I'm being hers, so that's a thing. Um, today I wanted to talk to you about the three misconceptions. Anyway, I'll start this video. Don't let me drown. Hey, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, hello. What's up? I'm burning my ass on my radio. So yeah, hi guys. Um, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hi. Um, hit the subscribe button. I make videos every single day. Today, I want to talk to you about the three dangerous misconceptions about recovery. And you're probably thinking, Lydia dangerous misconceptions about recovery. Yeah, that's literally what I said. So, let me break it down. Recovery is a process. It takes time and some things are good, some things are bad. If you try and recover before you're ready, it's inevitably going to fail. You can't recover when you don't want to. And if you try to recover when you're not ready, it can end badly. It can end with suicide attempts. It can end with, end with psychosis. It can end with, like, it can end with really serious things. Self-harm, suicide included. If you're recovering from an eating disorder, it's a hell of a lot harder to recover when you don't want to than when you do. If you do want to recover from it, chances are you will. And it's not a bad thing. If you're not ready for it, you go into relapse. I'm not saying relapse is bad, but it's more likely to happen if you're not already ready for recovery. Being ready for recovery is something that I think everyone has to. This video is about nothing in particular. It's about all things. I'm not going to label it as eating disorder recovery misconceptions or self-harm recovery misconceptions or BPD recovery. This is just three dangerous misconceptions of recovery. So the first dangerous misconception that I want to put to you is when people say to you, well, you relapsed so you're not in recovery anymore. That is so dangerous because it's going to be so unmotivating towards the person. Failure with recovery is almost always going to be a case. I'm not saying it always is, but it almost always is. For me especially, it has been a huge part of recovery for me. I've relapsed, I've been in and out of hospital. Recovery takes time and that's what I want to say to you. Um, saying to someone, oh why well, you relapse so you're not in recovery anymore is so dangerous because it could then put that person in the mind where they're like oh maybe I should go back to all my old habits because it was better that way and they can fall even deeper into their disorder it's so dangerous that yes you can acknowledge the relapse but be supportive in keeping that person on the journey through recovery rather than putting them back to square one recovery isn't a linear process it goes up it goes down it just it goes everywhere it's like a wavy roller coaster that's a really bad impression of a roller coaster if a roller coaster did this i'd be a bit terrified but you get what i mean it's not a straight line it's ups down recovery is an uphill battle and i think that is something that everyone needs to know about recovery a big thing that i want to say is people look at it as they see it as just recovery there's the mental recovery process and the physical recovery process I'm going to do a whole video talking about this. I wanted to add as well, there's more to recovery than, than just seeing a doctor. Not every mental illness has to have medication, just to be out, put it out there. With BPD being one of my diagnosis, I know, and a lot of you guys know, there is no medication that can be prescribed directly for borderline personality disorder. Recovery is a personal journey. It's not the same for anyone. I know I share my journey on here to, uh, like, so I'm like going through it with you guys and that's what the intention was behind me sharing stuff but my recovery path will be different to yours there's no way we can have like the same recovery path yes we could have been through similar things no one's recovery will ever be the same as another person so when it comes to youtube and you watch stuff like say my videos for example or you watch someone else your recovery won't be like that, it'll be tailored for you. I've always said this, and I've said it in a lot of videos, if something has the potential to help you in your recovery, then give it a try. It's, surely it's worth it. So this has been three dangerous misconceptions about recovery. Thank you for watching this video. If you're new here, hi, hello, hit the subscribe button down below, hit the thumbs up button, and comment down below any requests or anything you'd like me to answer regarding this video. Thanks to my Patreon is at the end of the video, as always, and I will see you guys soon with a new video. Also, what do you think of my hair? I, I'm like... I love it so far. I need to do the back a bit better because I ran out of hair dye and I was like, well, as long as the front looks okay, it's good, you know? Anyway, peace, guys.